Hey crafty friends, it's Amanda with Pear Blossom Press. Today I'm going to show you how to use one die set to make treat boxes for three different holidays. This is a really versatile set and I think you'd be able to make treat boxes for any season with it actually. So let's take a look at it. It's the Santa treat box. Now it comes with all the parts and pieces to make Santa Claus. So I'm going to show you that first. It's super simple to uh, put together here. You want to cut two of the bases and then I die cut uh, two more out of pattern paper and trimmed them down to like little shortened rectangles just for Santa's suit. I went ahead and I die cut all of my little face pieces here and I cut them from white paper and then just colored them with Copic markers. I did stick them down onto a piece of heavy doodle memo tape that holds my little tiny pieces all together and I don't lose track of them. Now you do need a piece of ribbon to hold the top of your treat box together. Um, so I've, I've got a little piece there. And when you cut out the pieces, you will see that it actually embosses three lines. Those are our score lines here. And I'm just going to go ahead and fold them all in the same direction. You just push the, all three away from you. And I've got a bone folder to help me sharpen up those creases. Very simple. And you're going to do the same thing for both pieces. And once you get it folded up, they, they kind of turn into little triangles there. So I'm just doing the same thing for the other side. Push all three folds away from me and then come back over them with a bone folder to sharpen up those creases. Looks really complicated, right? <laughs> That's pretty much it. So we've got those two little tabs that are down at the bottom to assemble the box all you need to do is add adhesive on the bottom tab and then you put the the two pieces facing together just like if you're sewing you want the right sides facing together and you pinch them together let them set up um, i'm using wet glue i like wet glue because it lets me actually have some wiggle room there and it'll dry nice and secure um, so while that is drying, I put a block on top of it and I can glue together my little facial features. Uh, all of the pieces are in the die set there except for the brim of the hat. And that was just a 5 8 inch strip of white cardstock that I trimmed at an angle just so it, it matches the, the same triangle shape there. Um, the cheeks, those big cheeks, they're really cute. Um, they just go right on top of the face piece. And I'm not gluing the beard down yet because I'm I'm going to pop that up. But I wanted to use it as a kind of a placeholder there so I knew where to put the nose. And then the eyes are little tiny black dots. And those are also, I mean, there, there's a die for that also in the set. And you see how it just really comes to life there? Super cute. Now for the holly berries, those are included. You get the two little holly leaves and the three berries there. Um, so I'm going to just adhere those to the brim. And again, that brim, the, the hat brim there is actually just a 5 8 inch strip of white cardstock that I cut down separately. And I'm just gluing all of these pieces. A jewel picker really helps. And I use PVA glue in a fine line bottle. I like PVA glue for paper to paper. So I like the wet glue for this. It holds paper nice and secure and when you use a fine line bottle like this you can control how much glue comes out so it dries really quickly and you don't get warping. Now to assemble the box all I did was just fold the two pieces together. I just kind of reversed it because we had the bottom flap sticking out. So reverse that and then just tuck the sides um, that have the hole in to the other side. And here I'm just going to start adhering the uh, pieces together. But first I want to decide if I want the striped paper or that tone on tone floral piece. I wasn't sure. That's why I cut out two. You don't need two pieces. You just need the whichever one you want for your box. And honestly, you don't need the pattern paper. I just thought it would be cute. So I decided ultimately that I like the striped paper better, but that floral piece is really cute too. And I've already got it cut out. So I'll probably make another Santa set for that. It only takes just a couple minutes um, because our box is already done. All we're doing now is just decorating it. If you wanted, you could cut the whole thing out of, um, you know, different colored pattern paper and just put to and from on there. You don't have to put Santa Claus on there at all. So I'm going to glue on the little 
uh, pattern paper piece and then my face and the hat brim. I do want to put the face down first and then I'm going to overlap the hat brim just a little bit. I don't want to cover his eyes at all, but I don't want them at the same level. I want that hat just on top of the face. It's a tiny little detail, but it ends up making a difference. It looks cute, I think. <laughs> You can see it overlaps just a little bit there. Now for his beard, I wanted to pop it up a little bit. I'm going to take a piece of foam tape and I'm just putting it in the center there. And then I want an even smaller foam dot to go in the center on top of that. So I'll peel up the release paper, put another little foam dot there, and you can see it's kind of graduated. So I've got uh, two pieces and that's going to pop up the center of the beard more. And then I put a little bit of glue on the top tips where it's going to hit the hat. And I curved the beard just a little bit. And then I'm going to go ahead and stick it down. And I'm going to hold it in place and kind of push in the curves just a little bit. That's going to allow the beard to just pop up a little bit more. And I'm just going to kind of make sure I've got it in the right place and hold it until my glue sets. And then I want to come in and add a little bit of glue behind the mustache so that it's attached right behind the nose. And I want to make sure that when I push that down, it doesn't pop off the sides there. But see that? Isn't it cute? Now all we need to do to seal up the box is to put some ribbon through and tie it in a bow. You can fill that with um, candy, money, anything like that, something small. This is uh, the wrong shape for a gift card to fit in there, but lots of other tiny things will fit. So let's switch gears and talk turkey. I thought it would be fun to make a Thanksgiving turkey as well. So I kind of uh, shopped my stash to find other dies to make up the other pieces. This is one of the things that I really enjoy doing. Um, I used the Santa Claus die set to cut out all of the circle pieces for the eyes. And for the medium circles on his eyes, I actually used the little hole punches at the top of the die set. Now for the other facial features, for the waddle, I went and I found my um, mini succulent set and cut out two pieces, the red ones. I wasn't sure which one I'd use. And then I've got my animal lopes set there, which the unicorn horn is going to make up the beak. And they, there are really cute little eyelashes in there too. So I went ahead and cut some of those out too. Now for the turkey feathers, I wanted to incorporate um, just leaf shapes. They're, they're perfect, right? So I went ahead and cut out a whole rainbow of them. And I will suggest if you're going to have a bunch of die cut pieces, um, a little tray is handy. So I've got my little rabbit hole one there. Um, I have a stash of different trays that I keep on my desk just specifically to hold my die cuts. Um, the little tiny pieces, again, the memo tape is really handy because you don't want to lose eyeballs, eyelashes, that kind of thing, especially if you cut them out of the same color cardstock as your background, like my uh, craft mat here is black. So <laughs> if I cut out black pieces, I would definitely lose them. Um, so keeping track of them in a little, little die cut jail is a, a good idea. As far as assembly goes, the box goes together in exactly the same way. You have three score lines on each side of the box and you just fold them all in the exact same direction. So I'm pushing all three folds away from me. And then I'm just going to come back in with my bone folder and reinforce those score lines. And then again, we just want the adhesive down on the tab at the bottom. And then I put them face to face. So the pretty side of my paper is touching the pretty side of the other piece of paper. And then I just kind of line them up and I'm putting an acrylic block on top of them. If you're using double-sided tape, like a tape runner or something like that, make sure it's strong. And obviously there's no waiting time for it to dry. But while mine is drying, I'm going to get my face pieces put together again. Now, I didn't know if I wanted the orange or the yellow for my beak. And the piece that I used for my waddle actually cut out two different shapes. So I went ahead, uh, one die cut out both of those pieces. So I, I cut um, two of the red wattles and then I cut two each of the yellow and the orange beaks because I wasn't sure if I wanted um, orange or yellow but I knew I wanted two layers I wanted it to be a little bit thicker at the beak 
Um, so I've just kind of put those aside there while I glue together my eyes. It's hard to tell, but off camera beforehand, I went ahead and I used a very light brown marker on the eyeballs. So when you saw me rotating the eyelashes around trying to figure out what I was doing there, um, I was actually trying to decide if I wanted the little brown curve that I drew on the eyeball to be at the bottom, the side, the top, where I wanted it. Um, and then I'm just going to go ahead and glue the eyelashes to the white ball and then the little black balls in the center. And then the tiny little white ones will go on top and slightly to the upper right. Just it's a glint in the eye. And make sure that you do them the same. So your eyelashes will be opposite, but the glint in their eye would be in the same place for both eyes. And then... I'll figure out my beaks here, which color I want to use. So I'm going to glue two, um, two of the horns together, two oranges and then two yellows, just so that I have a thicker piece. And then I've got those two little waddle pieces, but one of them has a little bit more of a, like, sort of a weird shape, and I liked it better. <laughs> it comes to a little bit of a point. Um, so that's the one I decided. I knew I would use that one for the waddle. And then I'm just going to check here, lay out all my pieces and see if I like the orange or the yellow better. And I thought the yellow had more contrast. It'll just be brighter and a little more fun. This is kind of a cartoony shape uh, or cartoony version of a turkey here. So the yellow I thought was a uh, better contrast here. And I'm going to grab my little locking tweezers. These are super handy whenever you're working with small pieces and it's hard to line up to see through your fingers. Um, so I, I always try to grab locking tweezers and get my fingers out of the way. You can see I didn't use it with the beak and the beak didn't end up straight. But honestly, the beak could be a little bit crooked. It's not a big deal. Um, but for eyeballs, definitely critical to use those tweezers. Super handy. Make sure you get them lined up and even. See that? You can place them perfectly. It's also great for words because you don't want your words to get crooked and it's easy to do with your fingers in the way. So now I'm not going to actually tie this box closed yet. It doesn't really matter, but um, I do want it to stay assembled so that I can glue the feathers on the back. And I just want to, I'm I'm using the grid here as a guide to get sort of a symmetrical layout here. And I'm just going to kind of get an idea where I want them to be under the turkey, how far I want them to stick out. And so having the turkey kind of assembled there is definitely helpful for that. And once I lay out my feathers here and get them fairly even, they don't have to be perfect. It's feathers. They wouldn't actually be perfect in nature. And again, we're going with kind of a cartoony version anyhow. Um, I'll just make sure that they're lined up the way I want. Then I'll grab my glue and just kind of put dots of glue on each of the feathers there. And if I had actually unfolded the turkey, when I went to push down on the feathers, I would have been able to pick them all up. But in this case, um, because that glue, the box is assembled, um, I can't push down without smashing it. So I just kind of picked them up, picked up whichever one stuck to it. And then the last couple here that didn't, it's not a big deal. I can just, you know, pick them up and put them on. <laughs> just like this. And I really like the graduation of colors from the red, orange, yellow, and then the green. I thought it was pretty... Nice for fall. I thought this box would be really cute if you had these as place settings at the Thanksgiving table, especially if you do like a kid's table. We usually end up having 20 plus people, although this year I'm sure it will be different. But um, normally at Thanksgiving, we end up with at least 20 people. And so every once in a while, I'll do a specific kid themed table so that I have something fun and if the kids want to sit there. But most time the kids just you know, intersperse wherever. <laughs> um, but I thought these would be fun. And wouldn't they be uh, cute little place settings if you assigned, you know, each person to a specific seat, you could put their name on the, on the little turkey at the place setting. And this year, my son is in Florida. So I think I'm going to send him one of these little turkeys. 
so that he has something a little special for Thanksgiving from me. But once I put the uh, extra feathers on the back, he's got a cute little front and back side there. And I'll just tie it up to show you how this works. Now, if you're making these little treat boxes ahead of time, you don't have to store them like all assembled. You can have them folded flat so that they're ready to just fill and then tie together then. That way they don't take up a lot of space. But I love how he turned out. And since we're right around the corner from Thanksgiving, I thought it would be fun to make a Halloween version as well. And the little triangle reminded me of candy corn, so that's what I decided to do for this box. I've got my little eye blender brushes and some Distress Oxide ink that I uh, blended the background on there with. And for the sentiment and the little pumpkin um, accents here, I used the it's the Halloween Treat Lantern die set um, from MyCrafter. All of my dies today are from MyCrafter, but I would encourage you to shop your stash. See what you have and see what you can uh, come up with for decorating. Now for the pumpkin and the sentiment there, I cut three layers of each and already stacked them together. And for the background, I actually thought I recorded it. <laughs> but I pressed start and stop at the same time. So I didn't actually record the ink blending, but let me show you how I did that. I cut out two more pieces of the background there and then I lined them up. I measured up an inch and a half from the bottom and an inch and a quarter up from that. And I kind of just drew two little lines across and then where they met the lines of the triangle, I poked through. And so that gave me four circles or four holes. And I just went ahead and kind of held the box together and where the holes met um, the edges on the back side I could make a little notch and then you can see that we have like the notch here and you'll connect those lines um, to the dots that are in the center there because it's not a, a straight line across if, if you were to just ink blend a straight line across you would end up with the orange and the yellow kind of sagging on the back side it, they wouldn't line up across so that's why I did that and it maybe seems complicated but if you actually sit down to do it it's very simple um, another quick thing to note on this was that I was assembling it immediately after I ink blended it so I decided to mask off the bottom where the adhesive goes just because sometimes if you're using um, like a, a dry adhesive, the, the double stick tape, um, you would definitely want to make sure your project is dry or that you do not put ink where you're going to stick them together. Uh, the, if the ink is wet, then it won't adhere very well. Uh, the double stick tape could come apart. Now I do use wet glue, but I wanted to take the time and just mention that um, if I had used wet glue and I hadn't masked off the bottom it would still work just fine for this but if my ink wasn't dry and I had um, tried to stick them together with double stick tape I would have had an issue so let's go ahead and pull out the little pumpkin piece here now I've got a little scrap that you can see I ink blended some yellow and orange ink on the top of and that's just gonna go right behind my jack-o-lantern's face just so that it, it kind of looks like it's glowing and I've also already gone ahead and I use some of the crackling uh, the crackling campfire ink to blend along the bottom of the words and the bottom of my pumpkin and when I put it together here I'm just going to use a, a little piece of that twine just to kind of hold it together for a second so I can figure out the layout for the words and the pumpkin. And then um, I was looking at it and I think it's really cute with just Happy Halloween. You don't even need the pumpkin, but I thought the pumpkin was really cute. I did think that he wasn't standing out enough there. So I went ahead and grabbed my brushes again. And the nice thing about these little eye blending brushes is that they're color coordinated. So I just used the red ink that was already on my red brush. I didn't even have to pull out a red pad. <laughs> just kind of cheated there. Um, and that just gave me a little more contrast so that it, uh, it just pops off a little bit more. And because I've stacked three layers of the sentiment and three layers of the pumpkin, they are elevated off the background enough there that you can really 
see them in person. So now I'm just going to go ahead and adhere them to the base there. I want to start at the bottom, make sure that my words all fit and that they're straight. So again, the tweezers makes it super handy. The wet glue allows a little bit of wiggle room so I can move them around if I don't get them exactly right. And then um, I was having a little bit of problem. You can see I've got the block up at the top and you're maybe wondering why. It was just to keep the bottom or the, the top layer from moving around while I was gluing my pieces in place. Once I've got all of those on there, I can just go ahead and tie them together. But isn't he fun? He's a cute little treat. Now I just use ribbon in my stash. You can use twine, you can use pretty much anything. And if you wanted to, you could even just staple the top shut, but it, it already cuts holes for you. Uh, for one last little bit of sparkle on the pumpkin, I went ahead in between the eyes and the mouth to add a little bit of glitter um, just to make it sparkle. I don't usually like to add glitter to anything where I'm gonna have food. So since I will probably end up filling these guys with food, I'm not gonna add glitter to anything else. If you wanted, you could come back in with some gems too. I think that would be fun as well, but they're super cute on their own. So I chose to not add any extra embellishment beyond that. Let's take a quick look. Again, we've got our fun little Halloween, Thanksgiving and Christmas treat boxes here, all from that one die set. Um, and of course I shopped the other facial elements from dies in my stash, but I think you can make a lot of different treats. I've got ideas already for Easter and for Valentine's Day. Uh, so I would love to know what you would make with this as well. If you're new to the channel, feel free to click subscribe and ring that bell if you'd like to see more videos like this. And I've got links to everything that I use down below. And I've also got a blog post so you can see uh, more pictures and, and get all the details there. As always, my friend, thanks for watching. And if you'd like to see a few more videos, I've got them here for you as well.